Thank you to Linode Cloud Computing for supporting this episode of SciShow. Go to linode.com slash scishow to learn more and to get a $100 60-day credit on a new Linode account. The average global temperature has risen by about 1 degree Celsius since the start of the Industrial Revolution in the 1800s, and it's still going up. The 10 warmest years on record have happened since 2005, leading to everything from more extreme weather to wildfires. But one of the nuances of the climate crisis is that the planet isn't warming at the same rate all over. Like, some parts of the world are warming up faster at night than during the day. It's part of a phenomenon called warming asymmetry, and the reason it happens has to do with clouds. One study on this came from the University of Exeter and was published in 2020 in Global Change Biology. In it, the team looked at climate change data from 1983 to 2017. They found that both days and nights got hotter on average, but for more than half the Earth's land area, nights got hotter faster. In these places, nighttime temperatures went up by more than an extra quarter of a degree Celsius over the 34-year period, compared to daytime temperatures. The team also found a trend. In places where nighttime temperatures went up half a degree compared to daytime temps, there was also more cloud cover, humidity, and precipitation. For example, in the Tibetan Plateau, nighttime temperature lows increased an average of 1.2 degrees Celsius more than daytime highs. And sure enough, the plateau now sees more than your average amount of cloud coverage during the day and night. Meanwhile, areas with less cloud coverage tended to see higher temperature increases during the daytime. Like in East Africa, daytime highs increased by an average of about 0.4 degrees Celsius more than nighttime lows. As for why clouds are such a big deal, well, during the day, white fluffy clouds can act as an umbrella, reflecting the sun's warming rays away from the planet. But when the sun goes down, clouds can have the opposite effect. They turn from an umbrella into a blanket. At night, all the heat that the ground absorbs during the day radiates out from the Earth's surface. If there's a lot of cloud coverage, that heat gets trapped, which then causes the air temperature near the surface to rise. This is likely why cloudy areas are seeing those bigger increases in nighttime temperature. That radiative heat just doesn't have anywhere to go. Meanwhile, this also explains why places without clouds are warming more during the day. At night, radiative heat can escape into space, but during the day, these places are getting blasted with sunlight. On its own, this isn't necessarily bad, but when you add the climate crisis to the mix, it can create a vicious warming cycle. Like nighttime clouds, greenhouse gases also prevent heat from escaping into space. They absorb heat coming from Earth's surface and radiate it back into the atmosphere, which turns up the temperature even more. And since a warmer atmosphere also holds more moisture, humidity tends to rise. This can create more cloud coverage, which then traps more radiant heat at night, and so on. And this cycle doesn't just lead to muggier sleeping conditions, it could significantly impact plants and animals. Like, the Exeter study suggests that since nighttime warming typically leads to the environment getting wetter, it can make it harder for nocturnal animals to get food, mate, and communicate. In areas where it rained more, plant growth was limited, potentially because more clouds during the day kept the plants from getting the sunlight they needed. So herbivores in those areas ended up with less available food. Shifts in temperature patterns like this can also change when and how plants bloom, and could allow invasive species to expand to new areas, all of which could further affect how much food is available for animals. Meanwhile, in regions that see more warmth during the day and have less cloud coverage, more animals could suffer from heat shock. When outside temperatures get so hot that animals can't regulate their body heat, their immune systems become compromised and they have trouble metabolizing food. That said, there is some nuance here. Even these trends aren't exactly the same all around the world. Like, the effects of nighttime warming on plants can vary widely, with the season and region. This warming can even have opposite effects on different types of plants, which could be both helpful and hurtful for food supplies. For example, a study from Nanjing Agricultural University in China found that yields from the wheat crops they looked at actually went up by about 18% with extra nighttime warming, and meanwhile, rice yields shrank by about 4.5%. Still, the overall theme is that neither more nighttime nor daytime warming is great for animals and plants. Even what seem like minor changes can make it harder for life to grow and survive. And we're already seeing some of these effects. Right now, drought conditions are growing more intense in places that experience extra daytime heating, like East Africa, which is causing crops and livestock to die and leading to food insecurity for millions. And as the climate crisis triggers more warming asymmetry, events like this will become more severe and disproportionately affect poorer or lower resource nations. Still, something to remember is that there's time to change things. If governments, big businesses, and communities come together to limit greenhouse gas emissions, 
ones, we can still bring about meaningful and just change. You can also lend support to local grassroots efforts working to help agricultural communities adapt to their changing landscapes. So this cycle of increased clouds and increased warming is one more effect of the climate crisis we can observe, and knowledge is power, but it'll take action too. One way to connect with like-minded people to take action against the climate crisis might be through online forums. And there's a forum for everything these days. And with Linode cloud computing, you can even create your own forum using Rocket Chat. These chat services help keep communities together. Linode even has their own cloud community that you can use to ask questions while you set up your site. Plus, one of Linode's developer advocates recorded a handy video tutorial that walks you through the entire process. You can follow the tutorial on their website or YouTube channel. And if you'd like more hands-on support, you can talk to one of their award-winning customer service professionals anytime. To try it for yourself, click the link in the description or head to linode.com scishow. That link will give you a $100 60-day credit on a new Linode account. And thanks to Linode for supporting this video. Thank you.